We all want to live our dream life, that vision we have in our head, in our heart, um, of what we think would really fulfill us or what we feel would really fulfill us. Well, there are certain habits that so many people engage in that make it practically impossible to live your dream life. And we can observe this if we look out at the world because most people are either living a very compromised version of this at the very best for most people and other people are living a life they absolutely just don't like at all. And so in this video, I wanna go over eight of the habits that really prevent you from living your dream life, but also some things you can do, some habits you can replace these ones with that will help you seriously move into that dream life of yours, really take big strides in getting closer and closer to that. So that's coming up next. So before we jump into that, my name is Dave and this is Heart Space. If you are new to the channel where I am creating videos every single day to help you along your heart path, to help you to really start actually living in that vision that you have for your life. Now, one thing that's going to help you do that is to get my course down below, my video course, which can help invite miracles into your life in as little as three days. It's a full-blown video course. It was initially a paid product or was going to be one, but I wanted to give it away for free for those of you who will use it. So get that down below. Now, anyway, let's get into what these eight habits are. And there's certainly some more I could go over, but these are some of the more glaring. And I also threw in some maybe more nuanced things. But again, I'm going to give you some things while I go over this that you can do to replace these bad habits if you notice you are engaging in them so that you're not just like, oh, okay, cool. These are the bad habits. Now what? I'm going to give you some things to go along with that. Now what? So you have something to do. So let's go in reverse order with number eight. Let's do it. Now, number eight is addiction to technology, especially social media or things that really burn out those dopamine receptors. Now, why is this? Because when you're on screens a lot, when you're on social media a lot, and you're not watching the highest conscious content, so maybe through watching my videos, you're okay, but if you go from this and then watch a million other videos and two hours has passed, you know, you're really hooked in to an energy that you have very little control over. When you're on social media all the time, you're getting dopamine hits, and with social media today, with things like TikTok and Reels, you know, you're going like this and you're getting that hit over and over and over and over and over and over again. And what this does is it keeps your energy focused on these little pits of pleasure rather than focused on the things that you actually want to bring in. It's hooking in your energy so that you're using it in an unconscious way and who knows where it's going. And again, to allow your dream life to come in, you have to really focus your energy on that which it is you want. You know, if you want an abundant reality, you have to focus on abundance a lot. But as you're scrolling, you know, there's so many different things with so many different levels of energy and most of social media is calibrated at lower levels of consciousness. And so I would really recommend for a lot of the day, put the screens down. Don't browse on social media. If you're going to watch something, do it consciously. So if you're watching a video like this, which will be a bit longer, which has to hold your attention, that's probably going to be okay, especially since the energy of these videos are of, at a higher consciousness level. But again, if you're on TikTok scrolling all the time, and again, you can do it moderately moderately if you want, but also understand that these especially quick um, action kind of social media platforms, they're designed to hook your attention. They do it deliberately. They do it in the same way casinos do it to hook you in, get you addicted to them. And that really muddles up your energy. And when it comes to manifestation, bringing in your dreams, your energy is so crucial. In fact, if it resonates with you, put in the comments, I am rooting myself in the moment because one of the ways to really alleviate this is to start putting the screens down and just taking a moment to breathe and be in the moment. So I would put that down in the comments or something to that effect, maybe something you like, you can share a quote or saying that's similar to that, that you really enjoy and connect to because then maybe some others will connect to it too and be able to use it. But this is a really big one. Just being able to root yourself in that moment, get off the screen, connect to what it is you actually are which is this eternal now moment. And you know, don't use the screens as much. They're fun and they're an amazing tool, but use them consciously. So number seven is poor eating habits. We're gonna take some of these common ones and then get into some more nuanced one, but it's an obvious one. You know, the food that you eat or whatever you consume has an energy to it. So if you're eating really bad food, um, not very live food in the sense of its vibration, um, you, that vibration is now becoming a part of you. This is why if you eat a bunch of bad food, you feel very demotivated. You don't maybe want to do the good habits that you want to do. And guess what? Bad habits beget bad habits. Good habits beget good habits. And that simply means that bad habits typically lead to bad habits. So when you're doing something like eating junk food, you probably want to go 
on the screens and watch Netflix like for three hours or you know browse TikTok for three hours or whatever else it is because they're on the same wavelength energetically. But when you're eating well, maybe you're introducing some fasting, maybe you're doing some juicing. I was gonna grab my juice, but it's too far away. Um, or you're doing things of that nature. Suddenly you're like, I wanna meditate. I wanna go for a walk in nature. I wanna work on my mission. I wanna exercise, et cetera, et cetera. What you put in your body is insanely important when it comes to your energy. And again, so much of bringing your dreams in, uh, the foundation of that is your energy. And so don't allow what you're consuming to lower your vibration because it absolutely will if you're eating bad food. I can tell you the difference I feel when I'm on a run of really eating well versus on a run of eating poorly is night and day. And I'm usually very sensitive to, uh, to these things because I've done it for a while. I mean, it's a massive difference. It's good because now when I eat bad food, I immediately feel a difference and go like, okay, no more of that but it is influencing you, it is affecting you. So I would really look into things like fasting, juicing, just eating healthier in general and really doing it. Don't get into the dogmatic approach with like, this, is, this diet's the best, this diet's the best, this one's whatever. What is good for your body? What does your body respond to? What allows it to vibrate at a higher frequency? If you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It helps spread it to more heart-centered people. Now let's move on to the next one, which I believe is number six. I told you we were uh, covering some of the common ones, and so we're going to move on to what is seems the natural next one from that last one, and it's lack of movement and exercise. But I want to approach this a bit differently. You do not need to be in the gym an hour, two hours a day, and you know, really pumping some iron or whatever else. I mean, that can be good too. And I would say if you're more masculine, you're a man, that that's something that you might want to look into because it really benefits your body type. However, just going for a 30 minute walk to an hour walk a day can do wonders for your body. You know, just being able to move and not be sitting all day can do wonders for your body. And the reason reason for this is because you have what's called a lymphatic system. You have nodes in your body that kind of moves like sewage and sludge in your body. And when it sits still, when you're sitting down and lying down and not moving all the time, this doesn't pump and it starts to stew and it starts to create disease and discomfort and problems in your body. But when you're just moving, and in fact, walking is one of the best ways to move the lymphatic system because when you walk, the way in which you walk is a natural pump for the lymphatic system. And this is why that if you just walk consistently or you're micro dosing workouts, you're not sitting down so much. I'm just going to keep walking because this feels nice. Um, but you're doing this consistently just every day for a little bit and just not, and just avoid sitting so much, you know, avoid really being motionless um, unless you're resting, like truly resting because you've been working out so much or whatever, you just need the rest. You're going to find that your energy is much, much higher. If I can be in a very low energy state, and a minute later have my energy raised just through doing something that involves my lymphatic system. I have a vibration machine I'll use sometimes. Um, you can jump on a mini trampoline too. I mean, there's tons of different things you can do. Um, but by moving that lymph, by getting yourself doing some movement, doesn't have to be crazy exercise. Just find something that works for you. Do some Qigong, do something that's very simple for you and that works for you. But doing that is going to raise your energy, which again is gonna help you bring that dream life in because the foundation is energy. All right, number five is negative trains of thought. This is one of the biggest reasons people don't bring in what they want because they don't think about what they want, they think about what they don't want. Most people who want health in their life think about avoiding bad health instead of just focusing on health. People who want maybe a fit body focus on not having a bad body and instead of focusing on what it is that they wish to be right? Or what the body they want. A lot of people, instead of focusing on abundance, focusing, focus on running away from lack and trying to keep that at bay. But the universe doesn't work in that positive negative way. If you are giving it lack energy, which is what you will give it if you're thinking of lack, whether you're thinking of not having it, you're going to bring in lack. If you're thinking of disease, even though your core thought is, I don't want disease, the universe still sees that as, oh, they want disease. If you're thinking of anything, just take anything of that you know, thing, if you're thinking of anything you don't want, what you're essentially doing is bringing it closer to you. And so one thing you can do is really just get in the habit of when you're in a negative thought pattern, just snap yourself out of it. It's not that important. You don't need to finish that thought. Snap yourself out of it and connect to the moment and just breathe. Just take a nice deep breath in the moment. And there are many other things you can do. You know, you can maybe stand up. You can, you know, do again, do a little Qigong, do something just to break the negative thought pattern. It isn't real. It isn't true. But the more you think it, the more you're bringing those things to you. And instead, take that breath and maybe focus on your vision for a second. 
Focus on the things that it is you do want in life. Change that and you'll start getting in the habit of when this negative thought pattern comes up, you take a breath, just take a second, root yourself in the moment and then change it to your vision. Change it to being grateful for something. Change it to just maybe even just rooting yourself in the present a little longer and just really connecting to what you are. And if you get in the habit of doing that, you're gonna start seeing things shift very quickly. Number four is holding on to the past, holding on to stories, holding on to identities, or anything else that anchors you to the past. I like to call these energetic anchors. If you think of yourself in a body of water, if you do nothing, what happens? You start floating to the top. But what prevents so many people from floating to the top, and we can call the top, where at the top is where your dreams are, this is where the high consciousness is, this is where, you know, essentially the life you want is. If you were just to do nothing, and you weren't holding on to anything, and it was just you, you would float naturally to the top doing nothing by letting go of resistance. But what a lot of people do is they put energetic anchors on their ankles um, through old stories, old patterns, and old identities. And they think of these all the time. They think of that time when they were eight and they were embarrassed, which, you know, happened 20 years ago. Uh, they think of maybe, maybe how how they saw themselves 15 years ago, and they keep perpetuating that belief system. When you keep giving energy to old stories, you continue to give them power. If you stop giving energy to old stories, they lose their power. Give energy to a new story. Give energy to the fact that you're a divine, infinite, co-created being, or however you want to look at that and process that, and I guarantee things are going to change, and you'll start letting go of these old things that are not serving you and are preventing you from that new life you want. Number three is another big one, and it's trying to control everything. A lot of people don't understand that they are in a co-creative process. Yes, that means there are things you can control and you should do. We've gone over some of them. For example, like your diet, your exercise, the way you think, holding on to old things. These are all things that you can control, that you can consciously and also teach yourself to subconsciously do in a way that serves you. But a lot of people try and control things they, they will never in a million physical lifetimes ever be able to control. One of those is external circumstances and what's going on in their outer world, trying to change their energetic past by trying to take something that's already molded and trying to mold it the way they want. It's like trying to take a Lego brick and bend it and try and make it into something else instead of going to the factory and being like, hey, can you make me this Lego brick? Which is what you do through your thoughts and your energy. You know, make an order to the Lego factory. Don't try and mold and bend the bricks that have already come out of it. But so many people try and do this. So many people have this pattern of control. They try and control people and they get upset if someone does something they don't want them to do. Well, you're going to have a lifetime of upsetness and not being able to live the life you want and not being able to be in peace or calm or joy or any of those things if you go that route. And so letting go of control of the things you cannot control will do a world of good of allowing the universe to then take control of that process and bring things in for you. When you try and control things, you add resistance. I've used this analogy before. It's like having a stream and the stream flows naturally and beautifully and brings in amazing things, great energy, amazing ideas that will lead to amazing things in your life that you will then do through taking action as a part of your part of the co-creative process, right? Taking action in the physical world is your job. The way you think, that's your job. Those are things you have control over. But if this stream's coming in and then you try and control things, what you do that you can't control, what you do is you're covering it up with moss. You're now putting like garbage and trash and moss and other things, and now the stream isn't flowing so well. The universe is always trying to do its job of flowing things into your life if you just don't add resistance. Again, you're putting an energetic anchor on yourself, and if you just uh, unhook the energetic anchor by letting go of control. If you were just to remove the moss and the crap by letting go of control, the river can flow naturally and bring in good things. Then you can take action, or should I say inspired action on, which will then bring more of the dream life things you want into your life. You will never ever live your dream life if you don't let go of control of the things you cannot control. And number two is a big one and it's deliberate ignorance. It's burying your head in the sand. You see, because most people know what they need to do. Most people understand why maybe their life isn't working in the way that they want it to work. Most people know, for example, why they're, if they're out of shape, why they're out of shape. Uh, most people know, for example, maybe if they have money problems, why do they have money problems? They might complain and say things and say this is unfair or whatever else, but deep down, most people know. I would say most people know what the cause of most of their issues, quote unquote, are. And the only reason they don't solve these things is because they bury their head in the sand or even if they don't exactly know, they know how they can go find out how to solve whatever it is that's happening. 
But instead of self-reflecting, instead of looking at that and going like, you know what, instead of complaining or giving into this old victim story like we went over, this past story, I'm just going to uh, give into that instead of finding a solution or instead of letting go and allowing a solution to come through. And if you get your head out of the sand and just look at life honestly, and look at yourself honestly. So many solutions will be, will be presented that you can then engage in and then you can then take action on that will bring about more of what you want in your life through. It will bring that through. But you have to be honest with yourself and go, oh, you know, so like for example, people go, I've been using the law of attraction for years and the things I want haven't come in. Have you? Or have you used it five minutes a day? What about the rest of the day? Are you living it or are you just visiting it? Right? And a lot of people aren't honest with themselves when it comes to these things. It's like, well, I'm doing the things you said about how to bring my dream life, but it's not coming about, but okay. Have you though? Be honest with yourself. Have you actually been doing those things consistently? Have you really been doing your utmost to live in that way? It's okay if you fall off or something, but you go, okay, I've fallen off, recalibrate, readjust, right back in it, right? If someone came to you and they were not fit or they were overweight and they go, I don't get it. I just, I just can't get fit or overweight. Well, how, how often do you go to the gym? Wow, well, I've gone to the gym every now. What are you eating? Well, you know, whatever it is, right? That's something where we know the cause and effect. And it's the same with your dreams. It's the same with the things that come in. How are you thinking? What are you doing? Are you trying to control things? And when you're honest with yourself, you gain the awareness of what you need to work on. Then you can work on those things. And then you reflect again and go, okay, I need to be a little better here. And you go again. But so many people are burying their head in the sand, victimizing themselves. And it's a horrible habit if you want to live your dream life. And number one is simply inconsistency with inner work. Again, a lot of people think they're doing the inner work, but then they might meditate 10 minutes one day a week or something and be like, I'm doing the inner work. Fantastic. No. That's not gonna really bring you results. It's better than nothing, absolutely, but it's not where you're honoring that. You see, if you wanna live a lifestyle where you're reaping the benefits of doing things like the inner work or people who are doing the inner work, if that's the kind of lifestyle you want, it has to be a lifestyle. You can't just be like, oh, I'll start doing it when the lifestyle's here. I'll start doing it when I feel more high conscious. No, you have to start really being now what it is you wish to sustain moving forward. And so doing the inner work inconsistently is going to lead to inconsistent results when it comes to what you actually want to come in. Inconsistent practice leads to inconsistent results. Consistent practice, consistently doing that work, doing it again, all in, full in, due diligence will lead to great results. Now, if you're looking for help with that. If you want to join a heart-centered community where we're doing the inner work, where I'm guiding you uh, along actually with my girlfriend who is uh, very developed in the inner work as well, check out my uh, monthly membership, Heart Path, where we have a heart-centered community. We have many different programs. We have live calls every single week. We do group um, kind of inner work sessions, accountability, all this different stuff. So if that's something that resonates with you and you really want some help with this or just to join a group of people that are really resonating at a high level of consciousness and continually climbing the consciousness scale, then I would check that out down below in the description of this video. Now, when you stop engaging in these habits and you start creating some of the new ones we went over, you're gonna start noticing some changes in your physical world. You're gonna start noticing certain things that actually indicate your dreams are very close. So I go check out this video next where I go over some of the signs that your dreams are near, they're close, they're coming in. And when you see this, it's positive confirmation that you are doing a good job in transforming and changing and applying what we went over here. So I go check that out next.